Tonight, his most famous fighter ever, Tommy Hearns, is fighting against Nate Miller in a cruiserweight bout. Since he was going to be on the scene anyway, it was apparently the Prince's idea to have him involved in what has suddenly become a pretty strong corner beyond the relatively unknown trainer, Stewart, and brand new cut man, Al Gavin, one of the very best at his trade. The Prince has never been cut, he says, but he hired Gavin anyway. There's Ingle. And here comes Michael Butler. Lords, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Manchester Evening News Arena here in Manchester, England, where tonight, Barry Hearn and Charles Muniz of Matchroom, in association with Prince Promotions, assalamu alaikum to boxing fans around the world, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beer, Budweiser, the genuine article, are proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, General Secretary John Morris, and the World Boxing Organization, President and Supervisor ringside for tonight's bout, Francisco Barcarcel. Timekeeper at the bell, Barry Pinder. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be John Coyle from England, Roy Francis also from England, Michael Pernick from the United States, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working for the 113th time in a world title bout, Joe Cortez. And now, boxing fans, are you ready? Manchester, Sheffield, and Scarborough, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing combat camouflage and weighing in at 125 and one half pounds or eight stone 13 and one half pounds. He brings an outstanding professional record to this ring, consisting of 22 bouts with 21 victories, 15 contests ending inside the distance by knockout, and he has one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former British featherweight champion, former Commonwealth featherweight champion, and former European featherweight champion from Scarborough, England, the challenger, the undefeated Yorkshire Hunter. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a leopard trimmed with Adidas, weighing 126 pounds or nine stone even. His perfect professional record consists of 31 bouts. All 31 bouts by victory, 29 of those victories by knockout. And he has captured two world titles. Tonight, he makes his 12th defense of his world championship and he plans to maintain his recognition by many as, pound for pound, one of the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sheffield, England, presenting the undefeated WBO featherweight champion of the world, man of the British Empire, Prince Nancy gentlemen we went over the rules in our dressing room i expect a good clean fight obey my commands at all time give me good sportsman like conduct understood any questions on this side here any questions here all right touch him up 
When this is over, Jim, are we going to be seeing singing Paul Garfunkel's Are You Going to Scarborough Fair for England? Or from the musical Hair for the champion Manchester, Manchester, England, across the Atlantic Sea? I am a genius, genius. That would be uh, Art Garfunkel and Paul Simon. Simon and Garfunkel. And round one begins. You caught a brief ringside glimpse of Nassim's father, Sal Hamed. And to go back to the early discussion with George Foreman about a change in style, the trainer says that he wants Hamed to be better balanced in a tighter envelope, boxing more conventionally out of a southpaw stance. George. Yeah, and I hate the thought of that. It would be like, like I said earlier, sending Einstein to Harvard to get an English degree just so he could do his math. This guy's got the whole package. You should let him alone. You can see why Engel is regarded as a pretty good defensive fighter. His head movement, his hands held high. Conventional wisdom is that fighters revert to form. Form for Prince Nassim is to launch wild shots from odd angles while avoiding his opponent's punches in the least conventional ways, ducking his head backward or from side to side. His now, edge, enormous punching power with either hand. Now, I like what he's just done. He did something stupid, and that's what he does best. <laughs> you want to call the other guy out to do the other things that he can't do. He's had a career of beating basic boxers. Why change and make him a basic boxer? After failing to come through on a prediction of a third round KO against McCullough last October, Prince Nassim stayed away from any specific round prediction or a knockout in this fight, but as his confidence grew in the last couple days, he did say, don't blink. The Prince looking for an opening in that shell defense from Engel. Hey, uh, Harold Letterman, they're wearing different colored gloves. Is there a story there? Yeah, Jim, at the rules meeting, the champion picks first. He picked a brand new pair of red gloves. They didn't have another pair of brand new red gloves left. So Paul Engel got stuck with the yellow. Don't blink. Ingle goes down on the left hand. Hadn't been knocked down in five years. Only the second time in his career he's been knocked down. I guess the punching power remains intact. The power is there. Now you look, Joe Cortez, when you see him in the ring, that means the champion is not worried about losing his crown. But this man has integrity. He should be crowned the referee. The, 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 the best referee as far as integrity is in count. Hard right hand by Hamed. Drives Ingle into the ropes. Prince Nassim has landed some power wallops in the first round. Two left hands and a right. And now Ingle lands a right hand coming back. As you know, as has been down before plenty of times, he was down three times against Kevin Kelly in his first appearance on HBO. But as he says to us, hey, I always bounce back up. <laughs> Round one ends. Nassim scored the knockdown against Engel. Nassim trying to fight from a conventional stance, left to the body, left to the head. Beautiful two-punch combination. As promised us, more body shots than we've seen in the past, and the left to the body there perfectly set up the power shot. In round one, Prince Nassim landing 18 of 52 punches by CompuBox number, 17 of the power shots. Engel, five of only 38, and Engel had promised us that he would throw 140 punches around. No problem, he said. 38 punches in the first round, only 102 short of his predicted number. It's hard to throw a lot of punches against Prince Nassim George because he stays at a distance and dodges from side to side. He'll slide his lead uh, 
foot ahead and then slide it back to you. So he keeps in position, put that foot right back up there and hit you. And I like that. Slide in, slide out. Nassim misses with the right hand. He's only thrown a few jabs. Ingle just has not been able to set up a mounted offense because he cannot or will not get close. This after claiming to us that he would come in and put his face on Nassim's face and try to fight him in a phone booth. It only took one left hand to alter that strategy. Once you taste that kind of power from a guy like that, you got to protect yourself. Incidentally, with regard to the use of the term title here, Naz doesn't own one of the three more notorious titles given by the well-known so-called governing bodies. The one he owns is a sort of off-brand, but in terms of his public impact and his accomplishment, he's the number one featherweight in the sport. That's why we designate him as the champion. He is definitely the champion. He's better beware that Engel has come here to win. Even though you knock him out, you can't play with him. comes in close as lands an uppercut and you see the fluidity with which Prince Nassim is able to throw his combinations with power shots when you get in close he had to be careful the angle is using elbows a little here oh he said he'll use everything elbows forehead he said you can't mess around in there you got to do anything you can to hurt the guy I don't like the idea of a guy gloves on it and ungloved elbows I think for a lot of guys out there who would like to be referees, they should really watch Joe Cortez. Most you see him out of the picture, <laughs> which is the best picture you want to see for a referee. I do remember him getting into the picture to count out Michael Moore on December 5, 1994. Oops. Uppercut lands for Nassim, backs Ingle up again. is starting to use his footwork left and right and that's what I would do anything that Nassim does tonight remember he's half-heartedly doing it he's messed up in training camp for the featherweight championship of Yorkshire and the world okay that's good okay baby but remember that job has to be a little bit more sharper than that right mm -hmm. you're being a little lazy with it right now remember, you don't have to fall into his fight, okay? You can do your fight, okay? Now, like I say, two hands to the body, okay, babe? Now we have to keep it down, remember? We have to keep it down, yeah. right? So we have to be looking a little bit more sharper than that, all right? And pick them, pick them nice, okay? Pick this right now. Okay, pick them nice. And remember, we don't have one hand, all right? We got three hands, okay, baby? <coughs> okay? And we're gonna yeah. turn them just a little bit. We don't need to reach with them. Just turn them a little bit, all right, baby? And boom, okay? Then we go with the motion. Okay, mm -hmm. So we're going to go to the bank now, right? What a contrast to last October 31 when Brendan Ingle barely tried to speak to Hamed, and Hamed made clear that he wouldn't listen to him if he did. Tonight, listening very intently to the new voice in his corner, Oscar Suarez. But, George, you spent 17 years listening to one voice in the corner. How strange it, is it for the Prince now to be listening to an entirely new guy? It's shock. It's going to take more than just sitting in the corner. It just does not sink in because the guy gets to be part of you, that voice. This guy has not become a part of him yet. As you see, he hasn't thrown one body shot as he was told. Now you see one. But it was back to the head. Like, I believe I know what I'm doing. He spent his whole life polishing a style which is completely and entirely his own. There isn't another fighter in the sport who attacks in exactly the same way as Prince Nassim Hamed. Suarez wants more conventionality. The Prince just wants to smile and knock people for a loop with power shots. Like that. Engel is really smart when he's not doing anything. He's moving his head. You got to keep your hands up at all times and tuck your chin with a puncher like this. Engel keeping his right glove pinned to his cheek, the guard against the left hand. And that time, Hamed punches right through the guard and lands a right. Engel just hasn't been able to mount any kind of attack. Well, what makes Hamed special is not just his power, but his combination of the power 
the quickness, the eyesight that sees everything coming. That's right. The movement. The eyesight. I like that. The reflexes. Yeah, he the elusiveness. The fact that the other fighter stands in front of him, having been trained to fight conventionally, and wonders what in the world this guy thinks he's doing, <laughs> and can't believe how effective it is. Breaks a few, a few rules here and there, but let me tell you, he makes up for it with the power. It's a little like standing on the practice tee in golf and watching somebody with a horrendous swing and saying, oh, I'm going to tear this guy up on the course. And then after five holes, you're four shots down, and you're thinking, what happened? Engel is starting to go to the body just a little now. Starting to get through. And Ahmed comes back with a three-punch combination. And he's wanting to go to the body with a combination, but Hamid has got to understand that your fighter must be coming to you to be able to land that shot. You can't go to him and throw combinations to the body. Ahmed ducking, smiling, firing the left hand, just missing. Engel misses wildly with the left, and Hamed effectively counters him inside. Rich Nassim delighting his fans in the crowd through the first three rounds with some vintage Nassim moves. Now the Prince is starting to throw away a lot of his strength and endurance by throwing such hard shots. Just well, he's extremely knockout conscious, and tonight, maybe more so than ever. Right. Good, good. Take it deeper, baby. Take it deeper. Take it deeper. Excellent. Excellent. Now, we rush there a little bit, all right? Which you didn't need to. Okay, baby? You didn't need to do that, all right? Remember, you keep to the plan, okay, baby? Now, every time you throw that hook there, baby, I want to see it to the body, okay? Because he's there for you. Automatically, he's right there for you. Uh -huh. Okay, baby? So we have to do it. Okay? Uh-huh. Here you go. Awesome. Now, again. Again, baby. We still let. Engel's trainer is named Steve Pollard. Himself a veteran fighter. Engel is getting $500,000 for this fight. By far the biggest purse of his career. He's also bet $10,000 on himself. 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds, which is about $16,000. That bet doesn't look too good right now. Odds of 11 to 2. If he wins the bet, he wins 55,000 pounds to go on top of his purse. Harold, how do you have it through three? Jim, three to nothing. 30 to 26. Prince to see Mehmet. Give him an extra point for the knockdown in round one. Certainly he's winning this fight. A clean punch for the left hand stance. He's murdering good defense, good effect on the rest of this fight of Prince as well. I think a big mistake, the corner talking too much. You want to tell this guy, fight your fight. Don't forget to get into that body and let him alone. They did ask for body shots again. And if Emmanuel Stewart is playing an active role in that corner, he's doing it during the rounds, talking to Suarez. Actually, he's seated on the opposite side of the corner from Suarez. So for the moment, there can be no conversation between Emmanuel and Oscar Suarez, though he's talking to Suarez's brother now, who's a chief second. But Emmanuel Stewart so far not talking to the Prince. Left hand lands for Nassim. And another. He was caught by a straight right hand himself. Yeah, the first time he took a good punch to the head. And there he goes to the body. But it's not necessary that he integrate all of that body punching into his style. It let it come in the flow. You want him to head hunt the Yorkshire, yeah. you're the Yorkshire hunter? Yeah, go, go after him, and then if you're able to get a body shot, just remind him of it. But don't have him going out doing things he's not accustomed. There's a trickle of blood from the right nostril of the prince. <laughs> Engel becoming much the, more aggressive now. He keeps all his punches up. He's in success. I hear exactly. 
exactly what you're saying, George. You think that Nassim's a lot better off if he just follows his instincts yeah. in there because you can almost see him trying to think his way through what his new trainer wants him to do. Yeah, see, when you're thinking body punching, you automatically bend your face down. That's why you see the bleeding of the nose bowing into these little jabs, subtle jabs. So Engel begins to mount an attack after having been frustrated through the first three rounds by the elusiveness of the Prince. In the last round, he got up to 57 thrown punches. This will be the first round in which he's landed a double-figure number of punches. Engel must be in great shape to be going at this rate. Boxing on HBO next Saturday night. Boxing After Dark presents one of its all-time best lineups. As lightweight champion Shane Mosley takes on John Brown. What a fight! Plus a battle between two well-known lightweight warriors, Ivan Robinson and Angel Manfredi. In May, it only gets better. When Oscar De La Hoya, coming off his split decision victory over Ike Quarte, good left hook Oscar, defends his welterweight title against veteran Oba Carr. Also featured super featherweight champion Floyd Mayweather against Goyo Vargas. Then one week later on the 29th, boxing's other premier welterweight champion, Felix Trinidad, last seen dominating Brunel Whitaker in Madison Square Garden. This time he'll beat Vincent Petway in San Juan, Puerto Rico. April and May boxing on HBO. For the first time, we can see Emmanuel Stewart beginning to talk to Prince Nassim Ahmed between rounds. Ingle landed 13 to 57 punches in round four. That's by far his best round in the bout. Prince Nassim, 18 of 65 by CompuBox numbers. Most of them power shots as usual. Ingle is doing something I like. You get a a guy basically who's a boxer who possess a punch, make him come after you. Throws away a lot of punching power, make him follow you around. for a chance to throw a right. Prince Nassim changing his lead foot from time to time. Now goes into a conventional stance. On paper, he's a southpaw. In reality, he's whatever he feels like at any given moment. Yeah, but he's the rhythm that he possesses. He will always do one, two, three something. Now he's just waiting for one shot here and there. Engel himself is a natural southpaw. Writes and brushes his teeth with his left hand, but fights, as you can see, out of a conventional stance, and that helps his jab and his hook. As his right uppercut was blocked by Engel's glove, but he lands the left as Engel continues to stalk and look for bigger opportunities. Missing with the uppercuts, but if he lands one, he's going to score. Engel reaching the fire right to the body. Seems to feel as though he's weathered the early power score. Remember, Prince Nassim knocked Engel down with a left hand in round one. A double left, really, one to the body and one to the face. Slight welt under the right eye of the Prince. in for those body shots. Everything else he does is sort of reflex, but when he goes to the body, it's a reach forward. Crowd kind of sitting back in its seats now as the action slows in round five. Naz going back to his elusiveness to stay away from Engel, who landed enough in the fourth and fifth to get Naz's attention. Now Naz is doing his thing. Put your hands down, relax. That was boring. 
Earlier tonight, we had some excitement. Junior Jones fighting on the undercard against a little-known Coventry Englishman named Richard Ebbett. In the first round, Ebbett, with the tiger-striped hair, put Junior down. And in round four, already behind on the scorecards, Jones was penalized a point for holding by English referee Paul Thomas. In round eight, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and went at each other, and Ebbett landed a right hand that again put Junior Jones seemingly in trouble. But in round 11, trailing on two scorecards and with his career hanging in the balance, the former two-time world champion Junior Jones landed a clean left-hand shot that put Richard Ebbett down and out. And he won the fight, although as you see, going into the 11th, Jones trailed on two of the three scorecards and seemed in our eyes headed toward defeat. Yeah, he looked like a shot fighter for 10 rounds, but found some ammunition, reloaded, and unloaded. And landed a shot in the dark to salvage, for the moment, his career. <laughs> Round six, Prince Nassim with a whitewash so far on Harold Letterman's guard. He's won every one of the five rounds as we come toward the midway point of the bout. When you've boasted of your greatness, when you've told everybody you're the second coming of Muhammad Ali, you create a very high standard, and that's how he's going to be judged. He could win this fight 12 rounds to none, but if he doesn't put more hurt on Engel, doesn't stop him, it will not be a, a victory as far as the media and the fans are concerned. And will it be a moral victory for Paul Engel? Well, of course. I mean, it's a win. You go on to the next fight, can't knock everybody out. But Prince has established himself in such a way that that is the high expectations of him. Did McCullough, though he won very few rounds, get a moral victory for going the distance against the Prince last Halloween? Well, in a sense, he's earned a fight with Eric Morales, the wonderful junior featherweight champion in May. So that showing uh, helped him. You gotta remember, Muhammad Ali got a lot of decisions. What he do was the shuffle in between the round to make him keep himself popular. The knockouts don't come for a lot. It's almost a fluke that happens beyond your expectation. Yeah, well, when he had 18 in a row, George. I've had 30 of them in a row. <laughs> Doesn't mean a thing. Winning that big W, that's what we come to see. Well, I agree with you, we're, but we're talking about a fighter who is, whose popularity is what counts. It's what puts people into the seats to want to watch him. George, you had 30 knockouts in a row, and Nassim is landing a lot of shots in this round, incidentally. You had 30 KOs in a row and the highest knockout percentage of any heavyweight champion. Can you honestly tell me you were just as happy with the 12-round decision victories? Yeah, you. I, I went the 12-round distance with uh, Evander Holyfield, for instance. I, it seemed like I got a hand up because I did it. So people are not looking for a knockout. They dress up, put on their suits, and sit down and watch a fight. If they get a knockout, good. What tells the story? We'll see after the night with the ratings. How many seats were about to Well, I think it sort of depends on how you sell it. You never went out of your way, as the Prince does, to style yourself a knockout artist and say you were going to dominate your opponent. The body shot did it again. Second vicious left-hand body shot of the evening for Nassim. You can't catch his win. That's a hard shot to recover from. Only 10 seconds left in the round. Let's see if Naz launches a wild. Went back to the body with both hands to the body, and really hurts Engel as the sixth round comes to a close. That's what they came to see, George. That's right. That's right. But they what would love to see it for 12 see, rounds. I told you right, baby, that's what yeah. we want, okay? Deep breath. Come on, give me deep breath. Give me deep breath. Come on, come on. Give me deep breath. Give me deep breath. Ah, uh, shit. So now we're having fun, okay, baby? Now we're having fun, okay? Take another deep breath. No, deep, baby. Come on, deep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jeff. Ain't got no cut, right? No. Oh, no. Left to the body, something we didn't see the Prince do much of in the past. There's no opening up top because of the defensive angle. That body punch put a hurting look on Engel's face. All right, 
and it was done right in the flow of things. He didn't aim for it. He just let it happen. That facial expression from Ingle tells you everything you need to know about the natural punching power of Prince Nassim. Some fighters just have heavy hands, and he is a case in point. What we wonder now is whether he'll bring his right hand down and leave his jaw open. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it? Through six. Jim, 60 to 50 through six rounds to death on Prince Nassim Hamed. Jim, let me tell you something. The knockdown, he, he knocked him down with a left hook. That means he was fighting out of the right-handed stance. He switches right to the left and very often, and he's very effective at it. He's now back in the southpaw stance, so left hands here are crosses. Either way, they're effective. And while he does generate power with the right hand, the more we watch him, the more it seems that the left is his thunder and light. Ingo landed a nice right hand while, while we were chatting, talking heads here. <laughs> Tough kid, Ingo. He's keeping his gloves up high, so a lot of the power is going off being absorbed in the gloves. Well, and you might have heard Naz bragging to the new trainer about his body shots as he went back went back uh, after round six. He's sort of like a kid with a new toy with these body shots. Yeah. Fascinated to see how easily he can hurt Engel to the ribcage. There's the old Naz. Wild, off balance, and effective. The crowd cheers mightily, and Naz smiles as Ingle lands a right hand. It was a good right hand by Ingle. All those body shots. When he doubles up with the left hand and comes back to the body, he is doing some damage to Paul Ingle. Ingle lands a left and another left. So Ingle making a nice little comeback in this round after having been knocked down in round six. Ready Naz's nose once again. Now the prince is using his rhythm. Goes one side with power, same side with power, and then come back with another shot. With another hand. And Ingle starting to tire as he landed a shot well below Naz's waist on his hip. But he doesn't tire much, does he? Keeps those feet going. High intensity, rapid pace. He just can't throw as many punches as he expected to throw against Prince Nassim. When you throw that many body punches that the Prince has thrown, you found laying on those elbows a few times. By the time this fight is over, he's going to have some sore hands. He says that he broke his left hand as early as the third round against Wayne McCullough, though we know of no procedure or split that he wore after the fight. It's full swear, that's when you're in danger. You're getting underneath, well, you got to close it up and then start ramming in. Start ramming in, don't be gentle, be rough. Don't be fucking gentle, this is a fucking man's game. Get in there and whack the cunt, elbows, shoulders, the lot. Check his balance, check his balance and step on him. Check his balance and step on him. His mouth is open like a train, he's only trying in bottom. Watch him, watch him. He's getting frustrated to broke I'm telling you, you're frustrating him because he can't hit you. He's trying to put the bombs on. Now he's trying to just flick off and he's trying to measure you up. Just keep the head moving, keep feigning him off and join him. Start telling him. corner they're very excited that was probably Ingle's first round and you heard Emmanuel Lewis in the Prince's corner saying you got to stand there closer and you got him which is just what he did yeah if you're a ringside judge and you were looking hard for a round to give to Ingle round seven would probably have been your choice bunch stat numbers Hamad landed 26 of 64 Ingle 16 of 61 so at least he was in the round Stewart and Prince Nassim both claim that they have no plans to do any future business together, but here's Emmanuel in the corner tonight. Let's see what happens down the road. Naz is pretty good friends with heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis and says that he spoke to Lewis just three days ago as he got ready for this fight. Ingle caught the Prince 
snapping a little bit. And that's what happens when your corner tells you to get in there and go, go straight punches, get a little closer. You start thinking about all of this foolishness, and you find yourself waiting for something. Red hit yourself. What did happen in the floor thing? Prince Nassim produced two eighth-round knockouts in his career. He knocked out both Steve Robinson and Tom Boo Boo Johnson in round eight. He had an 11th round knockout of Manuel Medina back in 1996. Those the only three knockouts which have come this late in about. And now Joe Cortez stops the action to allow Ingle to recover from low blows. Okay. I think it was the mouthpiece. Oh, that's it, the mouthpiece. Okay, excuse the Prince. me. Prince's mouthpiece replaced. <laughs> See, when a corner man tell you to do something, sometimes you got to stop what you were doing and wait and look for it. You got to be careful how you say it. It's not what you say, but how you say it. Judging from the look on his face between rounds, I'm not sure Ingle felt as encouraged as his corner did by the events of round seven. Well, that's the job of the corner is to make you feel like you're winning the fight. You can lose every round, but the corner said, boy, you're doing great. Something can happen. Did Dick Sandler used to do that for you? No, I didn't go many rounds. <laughs> Engel, Engel's the kind of kid who would start a fight in an empty room. He really wants to try to do it, but it's very hard to do what you'd like to do against a fighter of Nassim's style, power, and quickness. Yeah, he, he really wants to fight. Good right hand by him. Nas slowing down a little bit in this round. And just as the bell sounds, premiering Tuesday, April 20, we'll bring you the most recent edition of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Some of the stories to be featured, NASCAR, if it's the most popular spectator sport in the United States, and the numbers say so, then why are there so few black faces on the track or in the stands? Also, an investigation into the billion-dollar business of counterfeit golf clubs. Only a billion? Plus, a look at pitcher David Cohn, quickly developing into one of baseball's most outspoken citizens. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. Yeah, because he follows it. He doesn't know how to have a jab coming from a south pole. Uh -huh. It's different if he was picking it and returning, but he doesn't do anything. Yeah, he just keep okay. Just keep playing with it with the jab. But you just, just study it, please. Ahmed has found something with the body punch. The only way to go when a fighter is protecting his head that way. But right after that punch, Ahmed lost his mouthpiece. And if you were listening, you noticed that the, uh, the gag order is off for Emmanuel Stewart, who is now talking a blue streak to Prince Nassim Hamad. He tried his best to be quiet. <laughs> well, but the, the most fascinating thing about this is, is, is that he's not getting paid for this. Stewart is the kind of guy who would go and do a round for someone for free all the time. Yeah, but it's like Angelo Dundee, they love this. A couple of fighters who were paying him a lot of money decided they didn't want to pay him all that money anymore. There are many who believe Emmanuel Stewart is the best trainer in boxing. There are at least as many who believe he is the best self-promoter among trainers. All of the above. Inkle busier and busier now as we get into the later rounds. Nassim hot-shotting but slowing his own pace. Well, he's having some problems with his bleeding. A lot of that, he has to pay the price for all of that body hunting early on. And if the decision victory over McCullough love, rubbed a little of the bloom off of Nassim Hamad's rose, what would two straight root-going performances do? Still wobbling a little bit from the left hand. Body shot from Ahmed. Prince Nassim a little bit more active, but not so intense that he seems to indicate he's desperately trying to finish. 
surely he knows he's well ahead in the bout. He is so on body punching this time. Isn't he though? Yes. And Cortez is doing a great job of forcing this fight and staying out of the way. Cortez is a terrific referee. Well, I totally agree with you about that. He handled the Nassim McCullough fight in Atlantic City as well. Folks, a fight breaking out here. Nassim's face starting to look like a, like a fighter. Ass. Like a fighter, yeah. Now, for the first time, we see footwork by Nassim. There's nothing wrong with moving out of the way. Let's remember that at the start of this round, that Emmanuel Stewart told him to stand in there and go. <laughs> All of a sudden, the prince has decided, wait, let me get out of here. Because <laughs> look what happened when I stood in there. He's got a bloody nose and a bloody back. Right. You start passing blood out of your mouth and nose like that, you have a problem bleeding. I mean, breathing. And right. that's what is happening now. And, and, and he's not used to it. He's never been caught. So he, he's not particularly accustomed to tasting or seeing his own blood. It's a new experience for him, and he just celebrates the and, appearance of the blood. And Hamid shook his head, saying to him, good round. Everything is okay, okay? Don't worry about it. Hey, now, good. this is when the challenge should stop in the corner. And I'll call you out, I'm a rubber. Maybe the same with all set round. Yeah, that's so good, okay? Okay. You got to go through the middle. You got to wide open gap. Shoot that hard left hand through the middle, man. The outside punch is all out here, and he's catching him. Yeah. And he's there, and he's coming back because you see your time when you finish up. You're hung out, you're laying up. Work through the middle. You got to roll, man. Well, like it. Say it against you get set it to right. Look at him. Right between the two. Seriously. It's pushing. It's drawing down now. It's going to, listen, it's going to, each round, each fetch of sends, stand off, draw him off. So he starts drawing down a bit. Then start putting it on. When you put it on now, you've got to tell the only you've never done it. Keep that pressure there, son. You're doing it. Keep that fucking pressure there, Paul. Get her out. Trainer telling Ingle, give it a little bit of time. Don't come right out. As the round goes on, put, the, put more pressure on. Harold, how do you have it scored through nine? the two. Prince Nassim Hamed, he's got a seven-point lead, Jim. Paul Lingle's got to do something dramatic in the last three rounds. Watch the Prince's right jab. Joe Cortez can't make him a smart if it's a back end tonight. You're not allowed to back end the guy. And watch the late hits that Douglas Dingle Lingle Ling. You can't hit him after the first Dingle Ling. Well, the first time in the fight, Ingle by CompuBox numbers had the edge in power shots in round number nine. So he's won at least a couple of rounds, or so it would appear. How close are the judges' scorecards? Sometimes closer than Harold's. Two judges from England tonight, one from Florida. Florida, I should say, in the USA. A lot of this has to do with the wrong guys in your corner talking too much. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart say, fire the left-hand shot straight up the middle, and Prince Nassim just tried two straight left hands up the middle. All right, and Ingles, Ingles trainer, Steve Pollard said, it's going to be dangerous as you go in. He knows that this is the most dangerous time when you're trying to put the pressure at the end of a fight on a puncher. Well, uh, amazingly, Pollard is on record before the fight as having said, it's undoubted that if Nassim catches my man with a clean shot, my guy's going down. I want him to know that. I can tell you this. The corners over there has confused this guy an awful lot. You mean the Prince? Yeah, he's been awfully confused tonight, standing around trying to do what they told him to do. There are a lot of Yorkshiremen in the crowd rooting for Paul Ingle, rooting against Prince Nassim, and Ingle's having his moments again in round number 10. like Prince Nassim used to be with Brendan Ingle in the sense that he's listened to the same trainer his whole professional career. The only voice he's ever heard in the corner is Steve Pollard. Crowd thought Nassim almost went down. He was off balance, as is so frequently the case, and Ingle is landing his right-hand shots fairly freely now as he comes back in the latter stages of the fight. Prince has never been in this kind of a war. 
not over a distance. Of course, his fight with Kelly was a, a short, intense war. He's got one solid fighter in front of him, that Brian Ingram. It'll be ruled a slip. And round 10 comes to a close. And for showmanship effect, Nassim flips up, or kips up, I should say, from the mat. An old gymnastics move. And Cortez now allows the round to come to a close. Another man is going to the Prince's Corner. His father has some advice for him. Getting a little tired, catches that big right hand, shook him, turned his head 90 degrees or more. Round 10, a big round for Paul Ingham, who by CompuBox numbers landed 26 of 68 to 16 of 51 for the Prince and had a 23 to 9 edge in power shot. So the momentum of the bout belongs to the underdog, Paul Ingham, as we go into the championship rounds, 11 and 12. And it looks as though the Prince has decided to freeze the ball. Asim's insurance, he has scored two knockdowns in the bout against Ingle. He's the better boxer, so he should win this fight. And if a knockout presents itself, let it happen. Here's the third knockdown. And Pollard told Ingle it would be dangerous. Straight left hand shot up the middle. Too much for Paul Engel in round 11. Way to go. The referee was once again just right on the money. We give the Prince credit. Arguably one of his toughest fights. Pulled it together, did the right thing at the end, and still had enough to knock out an overeager opponent. Not before a couple of anxious moments, a couple of rousing celebrations for the Engel rooters and the crowd. <laughs> And a longer fight than Naz expected when he told us yesterday, don't blink. But all in all, the power's still there. He knocked Ingle down three times, including the last one that sealed the issue. Let's take another look at the knockout, George, on a perfect left-hand shot. Yeah, it was all about moving around. He got his legs together. This guy walked right into it. Well. I'd like to have seen that a lot earlier. When his legs were moving, he's in charge. Bounce to the left, then throw. Engel, as you've told us so many times, was following a puncher in those last few rounds. Yeah, you got to make sure that <laughs> you keep your chin tucked down, but he hit him on top of the head anyway. So Prince Nassim's vaunted power wins the bout for him as referee Joe Cortez decides that Paul Engel is not safe continuing in the 11th round. He beat the count, but he was still wobbling, and it was the third time in the bout that he'd been down. And he kind of fumbled off the ropes. I think that's what made the difference when he was getting up. His hands slid a little bit off the ropes, and that caused the referee to have more concern. Nassim Hamed seemingly struggling to adapt to a new style, new voices in the corner, and new instructions. Nevertheless, Although tasting his own blood, pulls it out. And a new knockout streak has begun. Crowd Ladies got their money through. Here's Michael Buffer. Time, we must indeed give our respects to the man who will not have his hand raised first. A round of applause for this challenger from Scarborough who came here tonight and gave it his all. Referee Joe Cortez.